39 of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is an account of Sri, uh, sorry, King Yudhishthira's bewilderment after his bringing Krishna into his home with the greatest respect. King Yudhishthira was very much bewildered because of his transcendental pleasure at having Krishna present in his house. In fact, while receiving Krishna, King Yudhishthira forgot himself. This is an instance of inertia resulting from the ecstasy of seeing Krishna. There is another instance in the 10th canto, 39th chapter, verse 36 of Srimad Bhagavatam. When Krishna was going to Matra, all of the gopis were standing behind Krishna, and upon seeing the chariot leaving, they stood there stunned and did not move. They remained like that until the flag of the chariot and the dust thrown up by its wheels became invisible. Uh, this inertia, inertia or inertness is due to being so much uh, wrapped up in Krishna and one's feelings or relationship with Krishna that he forgets all about himself. Uh, it, it said that the, the denizens or the residents of Vrindavan were so happy that they couldn't even remember their names. Uh, they lost all sense of who they were. They were just so happy, so filled with happiness because of love of Krishna. Uh, they didn't even know who they were. Well, <laughs> it's happy. <laughs> Krishna was once addressed by his friend thus, My dear Mukunda, due to their being separated from you, the cowherd boys are standing just like neglected deities in the house of a professional brahmana. Oh, boy. There is a class of professional brahmanas who take to deity worship as a means of earning their livelihood. Brahmanas in this class are not very interested in the deity. They are interested mainly in the money they can earn as holy men. So the deities worshipped by such professional brahmanas are not properly decorated, their dress is not changed, and their bodies are not cleansed. They look dirty and are not very attractive. Actually, deity worship should be done very carefully. The dress should be changed daily, and as far as possible there should be ornaments. Everything should be so clean that the deity is attractive to all visitors. Here the example is given of the deities in the house of a professional brahmana, because such deities are not at all attractive. The friends of Krishna, in the absence of Krishna, were appearing like such neglected deities. Hmm. Yeah, because the devotees of Krishna, they get all of their life energy and enjoyment from Krishna and serving Krishna. So if Krishna isn't there, it's like they're, they're like at a loss of what to do. You know, what do we do? We can't serve Krishna. Krishna's not here. Uh, uh. They just, like, become stunned, inert. But this also brings up another, another topic about the deities, that especially, like, once we're in India, and maybe we uh, can increase the number of devotees a little bit, that we should institute the daily bathing ceremony of the deities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just a matter of having enough devotees so that we can add more services. Uh, but I mean, de deity worship is unlimited. You can add more and more and more and more. <laughs> and uh, as they become more and more pleased, they become more beautiful also. And I've seen even in, in India, there's some sannyasis who have little bitty deities like this for traveling. But they take such good care of them that the deities are just effulgent. They're beautiful. They bathe them every morning, rub them with scented oil and ghee and like that, and then wash them very carefully and polish with lemon juice and all that, you know. And they just, they, the, the deities just glow. I mean, they're so, our, our deities are pretty nice looking. They get worshipped every day now. So they're pretty happy. Yeah? I like... Uh, to do deity worship. I did a deity worship in Vrindavan in India for years. Yeah, show them, give a, give a close-up. And uh, 
that was that was a very happy time. Bashfulness. When Radharani was first introduced to Krishna, she felt very bashful. One of her friends addressed her in this way. My dear friend, you have already sold yourself and all your beauty to Govinda. Now you should not be bashful. Please look upon him cheerfully. One who has sold an elephant to another person should not make a miserly quarrel about selling the trident which controls the elephant. <laughs> This kind of bashfulness is due to a new introduction in ecstatic love with Krishna. You understand the logic of the statement? No. Not no? Not. Okay, in India, you, the, the elephants are used instead of tractors and bulldozers and things like that for any kind of heavy work. So with the elephant, there's always a mahout, a driver, and he uses a trident. Huh? And that, that's how he controls the elephant, is by poking it with the trident. They're very, very strong and thick-skinned, uh, so it doesn't really hurt them. But uh, you have to have the trident to control the elephant. If you don't, elephant will just, like, ignore you, you know? <laughs> Elephants are incredibly strong. If they take their trunk and just hit you with, with their trunk, you're in the hospital or dead. I mean, they're incredibly strange. All they have to do is take their trunk and go, whap. So you have to have some way of controlling them. Very important. Um, so they're saying, why, if you're going to sell somebody an elephant, which is very expensive anyway, an elephant is worth a lot of money, even today in India, that why should you make a big quarrel out of selling the trident? Like the trident should go along with the elephant, right? So Srimati Radharani had already sold her heart to Krishna, had already surrendered everything internally, and now externally she was being shy. You know, in India when girls are shy, they like cover their face, and, you know, with the cloth, and yeah, yeah, like that, and you know, draw draw things on the ground with their feet, and you know, look away, and you know, I mean, they do all this stuff, right? So she was acting shy. That's what, that's what she was doing, okay? So her friend was saying, you know, don't, don't hide from Krishna. You know, you already love Krishna. You might as well just show your love, express your love. But see, this isn't the way things work in the spiritual world. In, the, in these relationships, they're always very crooked, you see? So even though, even though, uh, Srimati Radharani is, is, is totally in love with Krishna, right? She externally manifests shyness or even anger. Although within her heart, she's very pleased. And since Krishna is the super soul of everyone, he knows what the real condition is. So he doesn't bother with the external condition, which might be, might be necessary for her to deal with her family members and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, life is, is uh, and spiritual life especially, is appropriately complicated. People are complicated. So spiritual life should also be appropriately complicated. OK, the heavenly king Indra upon being defeated in his fight with Krishna for possession of the Parijata flower, became very bashful because of his defeat. He was standing before Krishna, bowing down his head, when Krishna said, All right, Indra, you can take this Parijata flower. Otherwise, you will not be able to show your face before your wife, Shachi Devi. Indra's bashfulness was due to defeat. In another instance, Krishna began to praise Uddhava for his various high qualifications. Upon being praised by Krishna, Uddhava also bowed down his head bashfully. Uddhava's mood is friendship mixed with servitude. So, uh, hmm, I wonder if there's any parallel there. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he, uh, 
didn't like to hear himself praised because he had the more feelings of servitude toward Krishna. So when Krishna praised him, see the, the servant, the spirit of servant is don't praise me. If anything, find my faults. That way I can improve my service. See, his interest is how to improve his service. So when he heard himself praised, he didn't like it very much. And so he felt embarrassed and he was bowing down his head. This is a good quality, by the way. In the Hari Vangsha, Satyabhama, feeling slighted by Rukmini's high position, said, My dear Krishna, the Raivataka mountain is always full of spring flowers. But when I have become persona non grata to you, what is the use of my observing them? This is an instance of bashfulness resulting from being defeated. <clears throat> 